Hello, people of the known internet universe. Welcome to another car review. Today I have the 2023 Dodge Challenger Shakedown Edition. This is one of seven last call final editions of the Challenger with a real engine in it before they come out with the new vacuum cleaner. And today I'm gonna get this thing up in the air, we're gonna it out in the tech spec, see how it's constructed, and then go give it some beans. I don't know about this. Well, they look cool. This is definitely a source for scuffed paint. On a side note, these are sick. I love these headlights. Like you stick your whole hand in it, almost. Yeah, wide body is the only way to go on these cars. It just, it completes it. Well, that's weird. It's got a removable flange, but yet it's also spot welded. Starting in the rear, the Challenger utilizes a five link independent rear suspension with an aluminum knuckle, lower and upper links, and then the front and rear links are tubular steel. The rear anti-sway bar is tucked way up in there and it measures in at 22 millimeter. The shakedown comes with the Bilstein adaptive yellow body dampers. Whoa, check that out. It's got a little slinky for a, a cable protector. That's some impressive girth to these rear axles. I mean, that's satisfactory. How's a posi track rear end on 23 Dodge work? It just does. <laughs> this one's paired with electronic locking diff and a 3.09 final drive ratio. Who doesn't love Joe Dirt? Come on. The 6.4 liter Hemi equipped Challenger wide bodies weigh in at 4,303 pounds and has a 55 to 45 front to rear weight distribution. And unlike the Charger, you can get these with a Tremec TR6060 six-speed manual transmission. A little HX pipe and some sticky dirt goo. That's why mom named you dirt instead of none maker. <laughs> I don't have to measure it because I already know this is two and a half inch diameter piping. Stainless up front and then it's mild aluminized steel all the way back to the tips. Come on, Dodge. You gave us some rubber pucks back here, but none up front. You have to use the pinch weld. Oh, weird. It's got a soft padded insulation up here in the transmission tunnel. While this is available with a six speed manual, this one is paired with the ZF 8 HP 78 speed automatic. It has a maximum torque input rating of 700 Newton meters, which is approximately 516 pound feet. And this is a solid choice. I don't think you can go wrong either way, six speed manual or the ZF. Up front, the Challenger utilizes an SLA or short long arm independent front suspension, all of which is constructed out of steel. And again, you see those yellow body Bilstein dampers and massive brakes. We'll get to those in a minute though. Anti-sway bar measures in, not the boys, thick. 34 millimeter. Well, that's weird. It's got a bunch of rubber plugs. This is pretty sturdy though. I can take some bottoming out. This thing has a ton of brake cooling ducts. It's got a thin little duck in this apron right here and a big duck up in the grill, quack. All right, time for the braking test. No one behind me. Ready, go. Whoa. Man, these brakes are good. I feel like that was better than it was in the Charger. I don't know placebo effect. I don't know if that you can use placebo effect in that scenario. Great brakes. That braking was just accomplished thanks to a set of six piston monoblock Brembo calipers with a two piece 400 millimeter or 15.7 inch front rotor. The wheels, they are a 20 by 11 part of that wide body package. Those wheels are paired with a rather meaty set of 305, 35, 20 inch Pirelli P0 all season tires. That's some 500 tread wear all seasons on a 20 by 11. It's an interesting choice. Check that out. That big of a wheel and tire and only took half an ounce of weight. Out back, you have a 350 millimeter or 13.8 inch single piece rotor and a four piston monoblock Brembo caliper paired with the square stanced wheel and tire. Same size as you get front. In the name of science, I am now going to give this thing the beams. 
and it's snowed out too. This should be interesting. Bolstering assessment. Excellent. Excellent seats. Very comfortable seats. They are heated, ventilated, and the steering wheel is heated also. The dash over here says shakedown for the special edition. As far as drive modes go, I love how Dodge does their infotainment system with drive modes and all kinds of just fun activities for performance driving. There's all kinds of different menus in here of things that you can monitor, like a dyno engine. What's kind of confusing to look at. So there's a button right next to a launch control button to access drive modes and then you can go from auto. That's the softest settings you can have it in. Custom, that's usually how I have it. Sport and track. And each one of those you can custom configure as you want it. There's also line lock, so you can do some Bernie Sanders. And then I can select the launch control button and you can custom configure at what RPM you would like to launch at. I'm gonna put it at 2700. That just sounds like a nice number. All right, let's see what this thing can do. Ready? Go. Ooh. Yep, fighting for traction. Oh, this is epic. That's good. Well, this is still so much fun. I can't say a Hellcat is more fun. This is a blast driving this thing. They're both fun cars. Where are you, Hood Popper? There it is. Oh yeah, I have hood pins because the latch is not enough. Okay. I mean, at least they're functional. That's sick. It says shaker right there, but um, a little bit confused. It, it, Ah, it is functional. It takes the air from the shaker and it pipes it into the air box area right here. Okay. Underneath the head of the 2023 Dodge Challenger Shakedown is the Generation 3 6.4 liter 392 cubic inch overhead valve V8 that produces 485 horsepower at 6,100 RPM and 475 pound-feet of torque at 4,100 RPM. I'm kind of surprised that the shaker hood doesn't affect the horsepower rating, even just a little bit, just like one or two horsepower. Oh, that's cool. It's got a little last call plate under the hood because they're only building a thousand of these, 500 of the manual, 500 of an auto. Powered by SRT. Oh, that's a plastic cover. I thought it was billet for a sec. That's such a satisfyingly clean engine bay. Like look at the job right here on the radiator core support. It's all smooth, painted and clear coated. Same with the top of the shock towers, just lots of smooth areas that you could be waxed if you're obsessive like I am. The entire underside of the hood is all one smooth continuous piece. The shaker is actually pretty easy to remove if you wanted to. The hardware is just tucked down inside the weather stripping. Digging in a little bit deeper into this generation three, 392 Hemi, it has a deep skirt iron block with a forged crank forge connecting rods hyper eutectic pistons has a 10.9 to 1 compression ratio with a 103.9 by 94.6 millimeter board stroke those sound like classic rock stations i'm pretty sure those are classic rock stations in maine 103.9 wblm isn't that a station in like portland maine Anyway, back to engine things. It does have cross bolted four bolt mains. And as far as the cylinder heads go, even though this is an overhead valve or push rod V8, it does utilize VCT variable cam timing as well as MDS, the multi displacement system where it'll cut down on four cylinders to save on fuel. And this thing has 16 spark plugs. It's a twin plug head. And can you see, well, you can kind of see, it has tubular exhaust manifolds as well. I almost forgot. This thing also has hood struts. Thank you, Dodge. Where's the cables? Those will get shut inside one of these, I guarantee it. It even says Mopar, it has a Mopar logo. This is such a love-hate relationship because I can't help it, they kind of look good. So these cars are fairly controversial in the car community. There's lots of jokes and memes about people that buy Challengers and Chargers, especially scat packs. but I'm gonna ignore all that and just focus purely on the piece of machinery here. And the one thing that I really like about the Scat Pack version versus the Hellcat version is the fact that it's naturally aspirated. 
there is a big plus to naturally aspirated power plants, especially if 6.4 liters of displacement. One thing I like to do in this thing is drive it in track mode, in traffic, and try to shift at 1500 RPM when you take off from a light and keep shifting at 1500 RPM. Because you can keep up with the flow of traffic at barely above an idle when normal cars are revving way past that to accelerate. It's it's kind of a low key flex to do that in one of these. Also a benefit of the scat pack with the 6.4 is I would love to put a nasty cam in one of these things and with the shaker hood somehow try to figure out a way to incorporate ITBs while still utilizing the shaker hood. This thing would sound absolutely phenomenal, I feel, with individual throttle bodies. And it would just make it special and unique. Yeah, it won't win in a drag race versus a Hellcat, but it'll still be a ton of fun on a track. And that's something else I feel is a big benefit with these cars, is I feel it's a well-balanced power and torque figure for this platform. Don't get me wrong, you can still track a Hellcat, and I'm sure they're fast on a track, but I just feel this is a better complete package and it's not overdriving the chassis. Now I'm sure the new electric Banshee is going to be fun to drive, but it just doesn't do what this will do for you as far as a car enthusiast goes. This soundtrack cannot be simulated with air or speakers or anything. Okay, how do I get any, oh the seat belt's gotta come off. Ooh. Okay, I'm sitting on the floor. Well, my legs might not go in here. Maybe. I'm in the back seat. I don't want to be back here. What is this? Oh, that's creepy. It looks like it's got eyeballs. Got a tweeter and an, ar an armrest. That's about it. Oh, the back seat puts the challenge in challenger. I'm gonna s melt my kneecaps doing this. It's got little tiny dots for dome lights. Are you a dome light or are you a UFO? Oh, sorry, UAP. I guess this is what they call one of those insurance back seats. This transmission is magic. I don't know which way to go, the six speed manual or this. I mean, I would probably get the manual just because it's a manual, but this is a great transmission. The wide body package is an absolute must. You cannot get one of these cars without the wide body. I'm sorry, it just, it's an absolute, you gotta have it. This thing's got so much grip, even though it's on 500 tread wear tires, it's phenomenal. Shake, shaker, shake. Shake, shake, <laughs> Oh, that's a good car. The Bilstein Adaptive Suspension does a pretty good job. I've been told by people who own these cars that the fixed rate dampers from Bilstein for these are better for track use. I wouldn't know, I never got to take one of these on a track, but as far as the rest of the car goes, it's an absolute treat to just cruise in this thing. That's why I'm in a nice picturesque farm country area and it's a great car to just go on a road trip with, other than the fact that the fuel economy is not the greatest in averaging 14 and change, but it's been a fun 14 and change. It is now time to give this thing some scores and confuse a large percentage of you, but that's okay because someone will help you in the comment section. First up is the bean score. It's the assessment of feeling you get in your gut when you give it the beans. And this Shakedown Scat Pack Challenger is getting a rating of I'm about to shake down. It's like 30 degrees out here, plus a wind chill. Next is cookie score. And the shakedown edition, as equipped in the mid 60s, is getting a rating of. Keep in mind, this is a limited production car, and it's the end of a V8 muscle car era forever that's done. So, next is the wrench score. And this challenger doesn't look like much of a challenge to work on, and it's getting a rating of. The only way that score would be higher is if this one had the six speed manual, just a smidge higher. Next is the squid score and the shakedown wide body gets a rating of. <laughs> Lastly is the penguin score and the last call edition challenger shakedown gets a rating of. <laughs> I'm truly gonna miss vehicles like this. 
Absolutely. At least it's going out with a bang. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this review and I will see you soon with another. Bye.